know what you want to call it. But when I ripped up all the signage in Broadbeach, all the COVID propaganda, <laughs> and I got a call from Burley Heads Police Station. But, you know, I'm, a, I'm someone who's a law-abiding Australian man. I'm done with this offensive this litter in my street. I'm done with it. All right, so I'm here with uh, Dave O'Neggs, uh, one of the first people to actually start speaking out, from what I understand, uh, back back in you know February, March, April um, last year. You uh, basically went viral. I think the first video I saw of you were you you were on a skateboard doing a live stream, <laughs> and that was obviously a thing that you did. And yeah. uh, since then, uh, you know, you've obviously been censored and done all these different things. And like everyone in this movement, a leader in this movement, you've probably tried a lot of different things. And I wanted to come and talk to you because I wanted to see what you're up to, how my audience can support you and vice versa, and just connect with you um, uh, publicly, but also privately as well to see if we can help each other out. But so thanks for chatting to me. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me, Monica. Really great to um, to connect with you and talk about the, the crazy insanity that we are we are facing right now. And I think, um, yeah, join forces in, in a sense as far as showing ordinary Australians that people have you know, like-minded, you know, like minds, I should say, are working together and trying to somehow unite Australia as we navigate this, this crazy storm. And hasn't it, hasn't it been great to see all these new um, initiatives popping up, like the unions and the, the big telegram groups uniting different industries? And for someone like you who's been in it from the beginning, it must be, uh, how does it feel to see all this stuff happening around you that you don't actually have your hand in? Yeah, look, it's... It's a roller coaster every day. Like I really fluctuate between, you know, hope and despair. If I'm really honest, and some days I'm really hopeful, and I see I see people coming together and doing everything they possibly can. And then I walk down the shops and I see the numbers of people who are still rushing up to to, to scan in and and wearing masks and and walking their dogs with masks on because the power of the the propaganda is so strong. But I think now we've gotten to the point where we're at this tipping point where the average Australian is just realizing how much trouble. The country is really in you know it's it's very obvious it's not about a virus anymore it's not about health care it's about a much larger agenda and the average australian that i talk to and i talk to everyone monica i talk to so many people that i just happen to pass at the beach or see at the shops or i might visit their you know their, their actual business or whatever and i talk to people and I say how are you feeling about what's going on and people out there are genuinely concerned about where this is headed there's a lot of fear and there's a lot of people not knowing what to do so now that i think people are seeing more people like ourselves um get on the same page um that could potentially help us turn the tide i i, I hope so because i i have to stay i have to stay ridiculously positive even when it seems crazy so i believe that you know we can do it but so what what what, what is going on with you at the moment what is your focus who are you working with what are you trying to achieve and how can we help and how can the audience get involved yeah, look, the, the big one, it's, it's funny, um, <laughs> you know, when I was in, initially started speaking out, I was in medical sales. I don't know if you know, if you remember a uh, famous Iron Man by the name of Guy Leach. I was taking care of Guy Leach's sales and marketing. And uh, we were selling defibrillators at the time, which are obviously for people when they have a heart attack. And we found how difficult it was just to get defibrillators into ordinary businesses, ordinary businesses as opposed to, to vaccines. But anyway, long story short, once I started speaking out, I resigned from that position on, on good terms with, with Guy, because I've, obviously I wasn't good for his brand <laughs> because I was being pretty controversial, calling things, calling things out. But what I've always, and to answer your question, where this is taking me is, I believe that the key thing we need in this country is mass awareness. Until we get the mass numbers of people aware of this overall agenda, there's not gonna be any change. So as far as speaking out and using media and social media, now, particularly working with Tom Barnett and another friend of mine, Haley, we're looking to use, I guess, media platforms to get the, the word out. So I, I really feel that people, you know, they've resonated with my, my content because it's, it's pretty down to earth and it cuts straight through and it's just telling it really how it is without, without all the fluff. And so what I'm doing with Tom and with Haley is we just want to have good media platforms 
where we can get, give people the right content, the right information so they can share it. And we can turn the tide because the mainstream media, if you really look at what's happened in this country, they've done the most damage. The politicians couldn't have done the damage without the brainwashing and, and propaganda and indoctrination campaign that they've ran incessantly, incessantly for coming up to two years. You turn on ABC, Nine Network, Seven Network, Ten Network, it is a relentless, relentless, never ending campaign. All there is is COVID, injections and the weather. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and then more COVID and more injections. So that's what we're working on. And as far as if anyone wants to support us, you know, Tom and I have started a, a brand, uh, All Rights Reserved. It's All Rights Reserved. You get allrightsreserved.shop. We've got some merchandise with some statements and merchandise that matters. So you can say that you're, you're pro choice or we just released one, Nuremberg 2.0. So we'll be using that brand to fund our media and try and help it help um, turn the tide of. of um, mass awareness and we had to interview people like yourself or Craig Kelly or Clive Palmer or Rick Bossy, people who actually genuinely care for the welfare of the Australian people. So you're going to start like an online um, news platform, mostly with uh, interview content or? Correct. Yeah, that's, that's where we're headed. That's where cool. we're headed. Yeah. Because yeah. How, just... how far away is that? Um, I've got to catch up with Tom. We're probably only two weeks away. I'm okay. Too far off. But, you know, we can start getting out our, our podcast and so on as well with the people that we want to talk to. But I feel like right now that, that there's that real need out there for people to connect with good information. And yeah. I think there's such a vacuum there because the average person's lost, lost a lot of faith and confidence in, the Australian, in Australian journalism. Every single one of them just sounds like a, a, a mouthpiece for, for big pharmaceutical companies now. So yeah, there's a real, there's, yeah, it's, it's mind blowing. <laughs> my, my, um, uh, RDA just hired an in-house lawyer, which is really great so that we can get out some proper legal content. Um, but he was trying to find the directions for the vaccine passport um, sort of with customers and businesses in Victoria. It took him 45 minutes to find the legislation on Google because all he could see was news articles. So the news is actually running the law instead of the law. And this is what, this is what we're up against. And... You know, for so long in this country, Monica, <clears throat> we had a, we had a, I guess, a mainstream media that we fundamentally trusted. You mm. know, I grew up with my parents watching 60 Minutes on a Sunday night doing proper investigative journalism through the 80s and 90s as a kid. And so that's kind of ingrained into the Australian psyche that the media was someone that we could trust. And that's just not the case anymore. They're completely corrupted. They have no problem lying through their teeth on a daily basis. And it seems they have no conscience whatsoever. And we've had, we're coming up to two years now and not one single mainstream network has offered any alternative uh, health advice or any genuine health advice in terms of sunlight, exercise, nutrition. And now we've got this mental health crisis unfolding, particularly down there in, in Melbourne and Victoria. And there's just crickets when it comes to that. And so this is clearly not about health. And this is where I feel that alternative media, even um, someone like Jamie McIntyre is doing fantastic work with his alternative media with mm -hmm. uh, Australian National Review. And so working with people like Jamie, people like yourself, and people who want to just share the truth because in this inverted reality that Australia is kind of sliding into, the truth is almost seen as some sort of crime. Another person, Monica, I know, you know, we can talk a bit about your ordeal because I'd love to hear more, but I've had four knocks on the door because of my social media content. That's four knocks on the door. I've never been charged with anything in my entire life or convicted of anything. The worst thing against my entire name is a couple of speed fines, speeding fines. And the only thing I've ever done that could be some sort of, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, but when I ripped up all the signage in Broad Beach or the COVID propaganda <laughs> and I got a call from Burley Heads Police Station. But, you know, I'm, a, I'm someone who's a law abiding Australian man. You know, I love this country and getting four knocks from the police, actually, and including one from the mental health team. <laughs> I had some people call the mental health team and say, this guy's crazy. He's a COVID denier. We think he's lost his mind. And we had the mental health team show up. Fortunately, Tom Barnett was there. He's, he's really good at handling those sorts of things. <clears throat> and they actually gave us something in writing that they understood that this was a harassment and a prank and that sort of stuff. So I've got that there in my back pocket. 
But this is where we are right now in Australia where ordinary people are being demonised. The truth is being censored. Um, we're having, you know, pregnant mothers arrested. People like yourself arrested for incitement just for trying to fight for the truth to be told to the Australian people. It's actually mind-blowing when you look at it. And this is why I think if you've got mass awareness and got the numbers, then we can actually slow, slow and halt this, um, this crazy rollout. Yeah, and it's about giving the content to the people that are already following your content as well to be able to easily share when their friend says, oh, but what about this? And they're like, oh, I've got this. Oh, I've got this. It's like quick information that they need to know straight away to try and, you know, help other people wake up. So I think I think that's really, really awesome. Um, anything, any other projects on the go? I mean, that's a big project. So I just, I'm just i just trying to give you as much airtime to talk about anything that you want to share. Um, no, that's really what we're working on with the, with the merchandise and, uh, you know, Tom and I. Um, I'll become good mates with Pete Evans as well. He's stuff in this part of the world. Um, we're always talking about things here on the side. Looking forward to interviewing Pete, you know, on our podcast shortly too. But fundamentally, I think, you know, in the, I'm so grateful for Telegram. Telegram has just been phenomenal. Telegram, you know, I put a few hours a day into Telegram, as I'm sure you do, Monica. And that has become a community support network more than anything. I've, I've never said it's my channel. I've always called it our Telegram channel because I feel there's so many like-minded people in there. And, at, you know, 45,000 subscribers in there. The, the, the comments are, they're strong, they're intelligent. There's a lot of support. There's a lot of people doing it tough in there mentally, financially, emotionally. Uh, a lot of people who feel like outcasts with their own family who have all, you know, not seen the agenda and they've been treated like black sheep. So they've come into you know, the Dave O'Neill's Aussie chat and they found a family there where they can resonate with people who are, are like-minded. And we've raised funds for people who've, um, who've been in ha having hard times. We've helped people promote their businesses. It's a really, really strong, supportive community. So that, that Telegram channel is, is a real project, you know. I know that channel will probably reach maybe even 100,000 by Christmas. You know, let's, let's hope nothing happens to Telegram because it really is the platform for free speech all around the world right now and what we've managed to do in that chat is create really good community standards um this look there's very rarely any trolling in there we've left the comments on and there's a lot of good people who are there frequently con contributing and making that channel a really great online hub which is um something i'm you know i'm really proud of that we built it from zero you know what it's like you, you start at zero subscribers and a few people join and you build your content and that's where the that's where the power is you know, and I think we're in this situation right now where you would have seen today, Monica, that this um, drive to have 300,000 workers through Coles, Woolies and Aldi all jabbed with the experimental mRNA <clears throat> injection. And, you know, if, if we have, you know, better platforms where we can get the message out to more people and help them realise they don't have to do this, you know, back in the day, we used to have really strong industrial action here in Australia. And I remember when I was a kid, I'd be going to school and get to the train station and the trains, the trains wouldn't be there. <laughs> You're like, oh, what's going on? Oh, another train strike. They want another five bucks an hour, right? And they would shut down the, <laughs> and shut down the rail network of Sydney. You know, and this is the thing, like unless people realise what's going on, then realise that we've still got the power in our hands as the masses, then we can actually make a difference. But where we're, where we're headed if that doesn't happen, and this is why I'm so passionate about it, if it doesn't happen and Australians do consent and drive themselves into this new world order totalitarian medical apartheid, once it's set up, it will be inescapable. They will have a monopoly on the supply chains, on things like driver's licenses, bank accounts, even SIM cards, all this sort of stuff. Like we're seeing where it's potentially headed. And so, you know, I often make light of it on my channel, but the seriousness of the situation can't be overstated. Well, it, I mean, it, I think it's important to stay light because we don't want to bring people down. But it, it, I understand it's important to talk about the reality of, you know, the, the, the COVID camps, the, the quarantine camps. I mean, it's, it's clearly, I mean, people are doing home quarantining now. So who, who, are, the, who are the camps for? Well, right. they're, for the, they're for the unvaccinated if we don't win this. But the, anyway, that, that's morbid. But I will say that um, your your Telegram um, channel, I'll make sure it's in the description of the video. It'll be at the end as well. So everyone, it's obviously a support network. You can reach out for help. You can give help um, and communicate with people, like-minded people, which I think is 
super powerful. Um, in fact, it's it's what's going to win because they're trying to break us apart. So we need to stay together, kind of thing. Um, but also, I'm going to have one. I'm going to do one more question with you. Is um, you know, David O'Neggs, you, you've 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 had a few quite a few videos go viral, etc. People will probably just know you as this influencer. But if I was to ask you, you know, like in one minute. How would you explain who is Dave O'Neggs? Dave O'Neggs is a, just a really proud, ordinary Aussie, to be, on, to be honest with you, Monica. Um, I'm someone who just loves this country. You know, I grew up I grew up in the rocks of Sydney. My grandfather served in the Navy. He used to take me down to Martin Place and we used to, I used to gaze up at the Anzac statues, you know, down, down there and they're just so beautiful. And he used to t tell me war stories, walking around uh, Sydney Harbour as a kid. And... Um, we have the most beautiful country in the world and he just enjoyed this incredible lifestyle. And I was always just another Aussie looking to have a good time and, and enjoy this beautiful country and make the most of my life really. And I've found myself in this situation where my love of the country, I've, I've expressed it and people have, have, have resonated with it. And, you know, I've always just believed so strongly in our people and the Australian spirit and right now I'm someone who is, I've been just incredibly, I've been incredibly shocked to see what's happened to the Aussie spirit. That's been one of the hardest things for me to, to wrap my head around. And right now I'm just someone who is just, I guess, calling out to every single Australian who's still got that spark inside them, this love of this country, the love of our way of life, the love of democracy and being able to move freely around this beautiful country and have the choice for autonomy over your own body and to be able to, you know, really celebrate this incredible country that we live in. Anyone out there who's still got that spark, find that spark and light it up in yourself and in your communities and in your families and with your loved ones and in your workplaces and do it from a place of love for this country and our way of life because it's going to take every single one who's just got that little spark left inside them to light the fire and, and get behind the good people who are doing good things and we can turn the tide together. Absolutely. I, I, I would say very similar to, to you. So that's great. <clears throat> so just so everyone knows out there, Dave and I are now connect, connected and we're going to be working together. We'll be sharing each other's content. I mean, I'll be, you know, when you do your new media thing and stuff like that, we'll work together. And I want everyone to know that um, because a lot of people like both of us and they want to see us together. So that's good. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to say? Oh, I just want to say um, to you, Monica, I just, I just commend your bravery. And I'm so, um, I'm just so impressed by your composure, the way you've handled everything and your, uh, your authenticity really shines through. And, you know, there's so many people, you know, in your age group, I'm a little bit older than you, but in your age group, who are just looking for leadership and for courage and they're just they're so i guess disillusioned and a lot of people are lost and you really are a shining light in australia right now so more power to you full credit and uh i love what you're doing so so keep going thanks mate i really really appreciate it i was i was blessed to give be given that opportunity because uh they made the bail conditions so crazy i couldn't even consider signing it so i'm glad that they did that <laughs> anyway all right great well we'll talk to you soon thanks Look forward to it. Thanks for the honour and privilege to be on the chat with you. Cheers, Monica.